Hello, my name is Benji, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite houseplants right now because it always changes. Before I get started talking about the plants, just to give you guys a little update about what's been going on with me and my apartment and my plants and stuff. So my roommates that I have are moving out right now. If you didn't know, there's me, Chris, and then two other people who live in this house. And the two other people are moving out because of work. So it's just gonna be me and Chris in this apartment. So I've just been really busy dealing with logistics of roommates moving out, and then also trying to figure out what we'll need for the apartment since my roommates are taking some things. I've been doing a lot of redecorating and putting the space together and finding pieces for the apartment. Let me give you guys just like a quick little tour of my surroundings right now, just cause, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty exciting. Okay, so this is where I'm filming. This is our new dining table and here is the platysterium wall behind me. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to do something different with this area. And then here is the living room. This is just like very temporary right now. Um, we're going to change a lot of stuff here, but just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. And then here's Chris. <laughs> he is sitting there with Theo. Wait, where's Theo? So cute. We're really excited about these bookshelves. Uh, we're gonna put a bunch of our books on there. I think it's gonna look very nice. I'm gonna take most of those plants off because I just don't want plants to be everywhere, everywhere. This is gonna be more of a dedicated bookshelf slash knickknack collectible things. So I got this art print and it's of Platycerium, which I love a lot, obviously. And it's not its forever home. I just put it there right now because we already have a nail there, um, but I think that's pretty cool. And then this area kind of looks the same. I'm planning to do something pretty interesting with this though. I'm gonna put a big mirror here and do some stuff up there. Also, I took off these vines. So I'm gonna be showing some interesting plants today. Plants that I don't really see that often on social media or talked about within the general plant community. It's not just aeroids or typical like house plant plants. If you're looking to add something cool and unique and interesting to your collection, I have some recommendations for you. So the first one is this. Um, this is my philodendron callosum. And I haven't seen anyone else speak about this plant other than my favorite plant YouTuber content creator, which is Summer Rain Oaks. I saw one of her videos about this plant maybe a year ago, and I immediately fell in love with it. I loved the shape of hers, like the growth structure and the shape of the leaves, as well as the texture. It's in this very cute orb pot. I got this pot from Goodies, which is the name of the store, and it's relatively cheap for a pot like this and it comes with a matching saucer so i would definitely check them out if you're looking for some um, not super expensive nice pots so i grow this in my bedroom on my plant shelf so it receives filtered west facing sun in the afternoon as well as a little bit of light from my soltech solutions grow light the main thing that drew me to this plant was the texture of the leaves. It's unlike any other philodendron I've owned or that I've seen. I can't think of its Latin name right now, but it's kind of similar to the pigskin philodendron. The leaves are thick and textured and kind of feel like calluses, which I feel like is where its name comes from. The next plant I am gonna talk about is my Dioscoria elephantips. I think that's how you pronounce it. I've never heard anyone pronounce its name, so I'm not actually sure. Um, I used to talk about this plant a lot, but then I kind of stopped because something interesting about it is that it goes dormant in the summertime. It started losing all of its leaves around May, and so did my other one. So I have two Dioscoria elephantips. I have this smaller one, and then I have a very large giant one, which I will try to bring out for you guys. But actually, no, I'm not gonna bring it out because it's too big and it's very heavy. Um, also, the vine is super, super long. Like once these start growing, they grow extremely fast. Now the vine is like probably over 12 feet long. What I love about this plant is the caudex, which is the main reason why I'm drawn to it. They call it a turtle shell plant, I think. That's like its uh, common name. And it has this really cool texture and these mm, craters or like crevices or canyons, I guess you could call it. You can see it grow over time and it just looks very cool to me. 
I also realized that I really like the leaves as well. Um, they're kind of these cute little heart-ish shaped leaves. These vines can wrap around things pretty easily. Like I used to have this one on a piece of driftwood, but then I removed it because the caudex was like pushing up against the driftwood. I think it might be like one of my favorite plants of all time. I love how slow the caudex grows and it's like mm, kind of an investment plant, except you're not like making money off of it, but it's like in 50 years when I'm like 70, this plant, this specific one, if I don't kill it, uh, will be a lot bigger. I like to imagine plants that I'll be able to have with me for a very long time. I think you can find these on Etsy and eBay uh, for a pretty good price. The only thing to know about these that I think is pretty important is that you don't want to overwater it and it needs a lot of light. Most people grow these outside under a shade cloth. Um, and I think I've even seen people say that they can take full sun, but do not quote me on that. I'm growing this one right in front of my south facing window. And then I'm growing my larger one in my bedroom right in front of my west facing window. I don't know if that location is really enough light for it, but I have nowhere else to put it right now. Um, so that's where it is staying. The next plant is pretty interesting because I originally bought it as an aquarium plant, but I decided to try growing it out of the water as a house plant. If you guys didn't know, most aquatic plants for aquariums can be grown out of the water as terrestrial plants. This plant is called Hamalonema humilis, and I've never had to pronounce that out loud, so I hope I said that right. This one sports a different leaf texture and leaf color when grown out of the water. So when this is underwater, I feel like I'm saying water so many times, but when this is underwater, the leaves are kind of like a glossy red color, but when it's grown, out of the water. It is a velvety dark green, kind of like a philodendron micans. Kind of has like a red undertone and really nice dark green foliage. And it is velvety and soft. Also these stems are red, which adds something interesting to it as well. And so far it's been really easy. If I forget to water it and it's really thirsty, its leaves just kind of droop a little bit but it bounces back right after I water it. It kind of grows like a mounding plant more than vertically. This plant started flowering for me and I believe it is an aeroid because it looks very similar to Anthurium, Philodendron, and Monstera flowers. I got this one from an aquarium store called Glass Aqua. And the next plant that I'm showing you guys is my asparagus fern um, arrangement. I guess you could say it's kind of like an open terrarium um, and I've had this thing for a very long time. I need to trim this back and replant it back into the glass pot, but it's a very beautiful arrangement with these asparagus fern fronds coming out and up, and then this draping down. So this is an asparagus fern, this is a polyaglocca, and then I have some stray string of hearts in here. Um, yeah, I want to put something on top of it. Maybe I'll put some live moss on top uh, because it just looks a little gross on top. But when it's viewed from this angle, it looks very pretty. I always get a lot of questions about this, like how it's growing. And it's just in a shallow glass dish that I thrifted. And then there is lava rock on the bottom. And then there is sphagnum moss on top. And that's pretty much it. I grow it without drainage holes and it's doing really well. It has a lot of roots on the bottom and I don't see any root rot. If you're trying to kind of like spice up your plant game without spending a lot of money or buying more plants, you can create a cool arrangement with them and sort of create your own house plant, kind of. This plant is also considered invasive in Australia. So if you think about Australia's climate, I actually don't know much about Australia's climate, but I know it is pretty like deserty in most places, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, this plant is illegal in Australia because it's so invasive, but I feel like houseplant people have so many issues with it, which is so interesting. 
but I think a lot of it is lack of light. So maybe if you're having problems with your asparagus fern, try giving it more light or maybe get a grow light for it. And my next plant that I'm talking about is my Passiflora Coplanvoxiae. And I know I talk about this like all the time and I bet you guys are tired of me talking about it, but I'm not tired of this plant, so I am gonna keep talking about it. I have it growing right now on the shelf next to my bed and I'm having it climb up this clear string that I have that I attached to a nail at the base of the plant and then I tied it to my curtain rod up there. So it's creating like this illusion of it climbing on seemingly nothing and I love it. I'll show you guys some before and afters. Um, it grows very fast. It can grow in low light conditions, high light conditions. And I do sell this plant on my website and I have this plant literally like in every room of my house, I think. I have it in the bathroom, I have it growing above my shower, I have it growing above my sink in both my bathroom and my kitchen, and I have it growing on my Song of India tree that's in my living room. Yeah, I have a Passiflora problem. So Theo's trying to get outside right now. Hello, Theodore. <laughs> Normally he would go outside onto the balcony, but it's cloudy today, so there's no sun for him. Poor Theo. He just moved to the couch. <laughs> so the next plant that I want to talk about is actually one that I do not currently own. I purchased it, I think a week ago, so it should be here any day now, but it is the Raphidophora formenifera. And I've never really heard anyone talk about it, but I saw one photo online. Um, I don't even know where I saw it, maybe like Instagram, but that one photo really caught my eye and it convinced me to purchase the plant for myself. Next to me is my Monstera Esqueleto because it kind of gives me the same vibes as that plant. Um, so you guys can just look at this while I talk about a different plant. What I really like about the Raphidophora from Foraminifera, I haven't really said that out loud before, is that it has a super unique fenestration pattern. It really does look like a caterpillar came by and munched out holes from the plant, but I just think it looks really cool and interesting and unique, and it just looks very different from any other fenestration. And also, if you don't know what fenestrations are, that is the term for the holes and the splits that are in Monsteras and Raphidophoras and sometimes Epipremnums. So at first I was like, this plant is ugly, but I kind of like it. It's kind of so ugly that it's cool and it also has a very nice growth structure like a growth pattern and the way it climbs and the way the leaves like hang out from the stem i don't know what i'm doing like you guys you'll know what i mean when you see the picture i haven't seen anyone really talk about this plant and when i tried to look it up i couldn't find that much info on it but i purchased my plant off of mercari and i've never bought a plant from that website before so we'll see how that goes and i think by the time that i'm editing this video i'll have the actual plant delivered to me so I will show you guys what that looks like um, when I get it. This is a Deuteroconia brevifolia. As you can see, I really like this one. I actually have one other one that's in the front of my house and then I had two other ones of this plant that I gave to my dad and then one that I gave to my friend Jahao. I first discovered this plant when I went to a nursery here in Los Angeles called Tropics Inc. It's located in Hollywood and it is the coolest nursery or like plant store that I've ever been in. They have the nicest, most unique curated looking plants with beautiful pots and all the plants look very aged, kind of like vintage plants. Like they look like they could be over a hundred years old. I don't really see anyone really talk about these plants outside of the succulent cactus community. Like I don't see this plant on houseplant people's YouTube or their Instagram. So let's start with how I grow it. I have these out on my balcony. So they get west facing sun and a few hours of direct sun, but mostly like dappled uh, filtered sun because I have some trees and stuff that filter out the sunlight. The thing that I just like adore about these plants is the way that they mound in the pot that you put them in. My large one looked very different when I first potted it in this pot. It looked really bare, it looked not great, but now it's overflowing, or not overflowing, but now it's really mounding like super, super well. It's just a ball of spike. Oh. 
Okay, I just got spiked by this one. Like I was saying, it's just like a ball of spikes. They are very sharp, so make sure you are careful if you get them. Even if you started with like a very small little plantlet of it, or I think they're called rosettes. So I don't know like the correct terminology. I don't think they're pups, but they kind of have like a self-mounding growth habit where they'll like send out new heads and it'll fill in the gaps of the ball. The common name for this plant is Argentinian ball. Um, so I'm assuming they are native to Argentina. I've seen old ones of these that look beautiful because they end up filling out the pot so much that they kind of hang over the side of it. And I've seen ones that are like over 50 years old or something um, that are listed for like thousands of dollars. I think there's one on eBay that's listed for like $6,000, which is crazy. I don't think anyone would buy it, but um, if it was cheaper, I would definitely get it. But eventually mine will look like that in a couple of years. And that's kind of why I have so many of them because the age of the plant, I think is where the value is for this one. Like the older it gets, the better looking it will be. And kind of like wine, I guess. I don't actually know how it works with wine, but like I know old wines are more valued or like aged wines are supposed to taste better or something. Um, so that's kind of how I feel with this plant and with things like my Dioscoria elephantipes. So a lot of like cactus, succulents, um, those type of plants I think look super cool as aged and grown in. So I have all of these growing in like sphere or round planters to complement that mounding spherical look that these plants put on. I think you can get these on Etsy and eBay, not for a too expensive price if you start small. The larger ones are gonna cost more because they've just taken more time to grow and like I said, they hold more value because these take a long time to age and grow in and look like how you want it to look. But I really like that approach with plants because it's kind of like they take on their own personality and they have their own value uh, because of the time and you can't really like rush or expedite the look of like the aged plant. This is like one of those plants that I feel like are just gonna grow with me and I'll keep forever until I die. And maybe these can be planted on top of my grave. It'll protect me from grave robbers or something because it's so spiky. I forgot to mention this, but I believe that you can grow it as a house plant as long as it gets a lot of light. So I'm talking like south facing window or very close to a grow light, especially if you want that really like mounded ball look to it. As for watering, I have them in like very well draining soils. So a lot of pumice, lava rock, things like that. Um, but I do water them kind of often because it's been hot here in Los Angeles lately. My next favorite plants right now that I'm gonna talk about are platycerium. Um, so I love like all of my platycerium, but not equally <laughs> because right now I'm really loving these two. So this one on my left is a platycerium ridleyi wide form. There's like different forms for the different species. And then this is my Platycerium madagascariense. And the common name for Platycerium is staghorn ferns. And the ones that you normally see in nurseries are um, Platycerium bifurcatum or bifurcatum. Really like this one because of the way it looks. It just looks like a very cool head of cabbage or lettuce. These leaves here are called shield fronds and then these ones that are pointing up are called fertile fronds. For my plants personally, they only grow one leaf at a time and I never know if it's gonna be a shield frond or a fertile frond, so it's always kind of a fun surprise in the beginning. But right now, I can tell that it's going to be a shield frond just based off of the shape of it. I'm looking at it now and it really does just look like a little mini piece of lettuce. Another thing that I love about platycerium is that their leaves start out super, super tiny um, like extremely tiny and then they expand and grow over whatever they're mounted onto. So like, do you see the way that it's wrapped around the moss mount that it's on? It's very cool to see and I love seeing it go from like a tiny little leaf to this large piece of lettuce that is like wrapping around something and growing on something. The Ridley eye looks extremely antler, like moose deer like. 
and I love that about it. And my Ridley eye actually started producing spores. So the fertile fronds eventually produce spores once they're mature enough. And then the Ridley eye has a unique spore formation that is right here, which I'll give you guys some close up B-roll on. And then I'm also really liking my Platyseria madagascariense. First, I wasn't really sure if I liked this plant because the shield fronds look extremely weird. I'll give you guys some close-ups and also some pictures of what it looks like when it's mature. The texture of the shield frond can look really strange sometimes, but I think I've been pretty into weird and interesting plants lately just because it's something different and it's something unique. And I also really like that apparently the Madagascariense and the Platyserum ridleyi are difficult to grow, but I have had no issues with them at all. I think they're actually the fastest growing platycerium that I have. And I'm thinking of doing a platycerium video similar to my carnivorous plants video, where I give a little tour of my platycerium and then talk about how I care for them. I have all of these just under grow lights. Eventually I'm gonna have them all on this wall that's behind me and create a cool platycerium gallery wall, which I will be documenting and I'll make a video about. They're just so beautiful and kind of like living art and you can put them on your wall like you would with a painting or like a art piece, um, but it's alive and it's growing. So that's pretty cool. And it takes up wall space without having to add shelves for plants. Like if you want to add plants to a certain wall, then you could do some staghorn ferns or platycerium and you won't need to add shelves. And platycerium are also plants that just live a long time and look cooler and cooler with age. So. That's also why I feel a little bit more of a an emotional connection, kind of. Like, that's why I like them so much, I think. The next plants that I'm really into right now are my Philodendron Glorious. Yeah, Glorious. And my Anthurium Pendens. And here, I'm going to move out of the way so you guys can see them. They're just growing so large. I think they look very pretty as like statement plants because they just have a very unique look to them. I feel like your eye is just drawn to them immediately when you come into the room. But I am planning to move my Anthurium pendants maybe to my dining room or to my living room or something because I feel like the pendants and the Glorious are both extremely unique and beautiful and nice statements, but being next to each other and makes it so neither of them really shine. I've had this Philodendron Glorious for maybe two years now, and it's taller than me. It started off as like a short plant. And this is one of the first like rare philodendrons that I purchased. It needs to be like strung up or something because it's outgrown its pole, but I would not dare to repot this plant because it's just like, it's too much of a hassle to repot big plants. And I also don't want to chop it and propagate it because I love how tall it is. It's recently been putting out these really big leaves for me and I've realized that I don't want a lot of big plants with big leaves because where can I put them realistically like in my apartment yeah I've kind of moved away from wanting like giant plants and giant leaves but just keeping a few is nice as like a statement I've had this one I think only for about a year and I filmed myself potting it in this vanda basket maybe like last year I think so I probably need to repot it soon, but it just seems so difficult because the roots are attached onto the wood vanda basket. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, but it dries out so quickly. I have to water it either every day or every other day, which makes managing this plant kind of cumbersome, but I don't mind because I really do love it. I think the longest one is like five feet long. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do though once it inevitably reaches the floor. Those are all the plants that I have for you guys today, but I just wanted to say that it's been a little over a year now being in this apartment. And I also recently reached like 200,000 subscribers. So I just wanted to say thank you to you guys. And I don't really talk about it that much, but I am extremely grateful to you guys for your support and everything. And especially to those of you who have been following me since my college days. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this kind of plant favorites type video. I have obviously like a lot more plants that I feel like aren't talked about enough. So the next videos to come are gonna be redecorating my apartment and designing it. And I'm very excited to do it and to film it for you guys. Um, well, it's mostly for myself.
but I'm excited to be able to show you guys. I've been really into interior decor and designing stuff lately. Like it's brought me a lot of joy and then trying to see how my plants fit into a design or a decorating aesthetic. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with that recently and Theo's been so good this whole video. He hasn't barked. He's been so sleepy and cute. I saw some comments from people saying that they missed Theo in the last video because he didn't make an appearance. So this is for you. Okay. Theo, signing off. Peace. Oh, okay. You can go back to sleep. Goodbye.